Jim. <laughs> One, two, three. We're playing a game with Jim. He doesn't know he's playing. I gotta get him to say the name of today's band. Let's see if I can do it. What's up? Out of all of the pussies in the world, what color is my favorite pussy? Uh, black. Black what? Island black. Are you alone? Yeah. Okay. Black, pink, pussy. That's what you like. Robert. I like pink pussy. What color pussy do I like? Do I like white pussy? No, white. Rob, Rob likes black pussy. Thank you. That took black. like a Because every week i got to call somebody and try and make them say the name of the band. <laughs> and I picked you first. You're the first person that I did it to. You don't mind. And that's the name of the band? This week's band is Black Pussy. So The band's name is Black Pussy? Yeah, they're real good. They actually did uh, uh, cover it. Don't fear the Reaper. That would blow your mind. Hmm. All right. Say, say the name of this week's band. Jim, you've just said the name of this week's band. On this week's Live Nude Puppets, I attempt to have unconsensual sex with the Pillsbury Doughboy. Jay is giving away tons of stuff, and I pull out an old script I wrote for National Lampoon's Vacation back in the day, and one of North America's top touring bands, Black Pussy. Don't say any potty words because my mom is listening. Oh, baby, I love you. You f***ing bastard. Hey, planet Earth, it's Live Nude Puppets. We're back. It's Bobby Puppet, and I'm Jay Puppet. Go f*** yourself. Sounds like you need some... We ain't got no budget. We don't need no budget. I know what you need. Need some... Okay, so I we got the wait. live nude puppet coins in. So I still got a handful of these things. If anybody wants, originally 3D printed, it's going to be a one-time run. I'm not... Uh, Smells like Bobby got a new toy and he's been learning how to play with it. You might get the first one, which is marked on the back and signed by me as one of one test run live nude puppets coin. And we're going to give value to these coins. We're going to make it a game. And Bobby's got a cool signature too. Mine just looks like a scribble. So we're going to make a game of this. We're going to try and get those coins back. So that means if you see us at a convention or at a show and you got a coin on you, and if it's one of the original ones that I sent out, um, the batches have been made, LiveNudePuppets at gmail.com to get one. If we can give you the T-shirt for free, we will. If there's a vendor involved, we'll minus his cost. You'll pay his cost, and all of our cost goes to you. So you're going to get a T-shirt, a $15 T-shirt for 5 bucks or you're going to get it for free. That's what we're saying. The game is we want to get these coins back, and the few that are left out there will have a better value. And if we're running out of shirts, we will just... Bob, will give you a sexual fl- favor. We'll do something. If there's backstage... He'll make it worth your while. We're with somebody cool, and we're opening for somebody cool, and there's a backstage area where we could have guests, then we'll get you in, and we'll get your coin back. If we can do it... You can get drunk with me. Right. Hi, this is Beach Ram Shackle from Circle and Bird. You're listening to Live News Puppet. Like over 55 different countries, some of them are smaller than Jersey. We don't have even one listen in the state of... Oh, it was North Dakota, right? North Dakota. Not one download in North Dakota. All right. Here's the deal. North Dakota. First one to send us an email, you're getting a shirt. Free shirt, North Dakota. You have to sign up as a listener, you're getting a free shirt. Free shirt. If you were all like all stoned and you walk into the kitchen and here's the Pillsbury Doughboy. You know what I would do? I would I would fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I would fu- I would fuck the Pillsbury Doughboy. I pick him up and I flip him over and then he sees Mr. Bill with a big hole through him and the Energizer Bunny. And, and snuggle instead of going, cellmates. And instead of going, <laughs> I'm gonna put some butter on your ass, and you're in trouble, no boy. <laughs> it's gotta be in there somewhere. I gotta be in the spot. He's titty fucking Aunt Jemima. <laughs> While I'm fucking him in the ass. 
and make cinnamon <laughs> rolls out of them. <laughs> I had a creepy uncle who had some kind of porn magazine, and it was probably just a Hustler, but when you're young, it doesn't matter. It's still too much. Hustler is too much. I don't want to see lower intestines. We're not doctors. We don't need to see that far up you. Okay, Hustler? Chill. <laughs> Low, you know, bring it back. Leave a little mystery. Okay, maybe there's a cute little mouse in there. I don't know. But I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> so don't open up everybody's orifices. Larry. Okay, Lawrence, can we straighten that out? How you doing today, little Tommy? <laughs> Let me do that again. I'll back off the mic. You know Tommy's part? No, I don't, but Jim used to do it. That's why I'm laughing, because I'm thinking, shit, I wish Jim was here. Hello, everybody. It's time for Animal Stories with your old Uncle Lair and your little Tommy. How you doing, little Tommy? I'm doing good, Uncle Lair. All right, Tommy, come here. All right. Tommy, did you ever have a python in your pants? Can't say I have, Uncle Lair. Uncle Lair, I'm scared. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Uncle Lair, I don't want to sit on your lap. <laughs> Oh, didn't mean to go there, kids. All the uh, family comedies like uh, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase, they all had that in there. And so, and everybody, even the, your six-year-old brother saw Bro Bo Derek Topless. Or no, who is that? Christy Brinkley Topless. Yep. That was an excellent moment in, in uh, television. I got to see the new one because I wrote that script. That... Oh shit! You haven't seen the new one? No, no, I haven't. I should look for it on Netflix too. But here's the thing: I don't. I, I before I say anything, I want you to know, I rewrote that like in 2007. Okay, so you got to think of the time. And my story mm -hmm. was, it all went back to Uncle Eddie's worm farm. Okay, and then Rusty grows mm -hmm. up and he becomes a scientist, okay, like an earth scientist, real boring earth scientist job. And mm -hmm. something happens on earth where, uh, you know, like the soil erodes or something like that. Um, Rusty ends up going traveling to California with dad for some reason. And then they end up at Uncle Eddie's worm farm in Nevada on the nuclear test site. And they got these big giant worms. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of did a switch on it. And it turns out that the Japanese will pay, like, ass loads for these worms. <laughs> That's great. They're like 60-pound worms, and they're ugly as fuck. over there munching on and shit. Right. <laughs> Come on, kids. Right. So on the way, Eddie, uh, Rusty and Dad meet up with uh, my favorite in the whole world, um, Jessica Simpson. And she's driving the red Ferrari now, okay, but a new one. And she's passing by in the left-hand lane. And then Rusty gets with her. And she's an earth scientist. By, or some other kind of biologist scientist. And between the two of them, they figure out this way to change the earth's soil on their way to Wally World in California. That's my story that I wrote back in 2007. Okay, so the good news is they didn't copy your script. Okay, it was mine better than Except theirs. For the fact, yours is good. Theirs is good, too. But theirs is better? Well, I mean, it's more polished, but I mean, you know. But don't you want to see Jessica Simpson topless in a pool at a Motel 6 at 2 a.m.? That would be fun.
That was Don't Fear the Reaper from Black Pussy with Aaron Poplin on bass, Dean Carroll on drums, Keith O'Dell working the keys, Ryan McIntyre on guitar, and with us today is Dustin Hill on vocals and guitar as well. Dustin, how's it going today? It's going pretty good. You know, besides the sinus infection, everything's killer, man. Uh, <laughs> just, just arrived in uh, Kansas City. Very nice. Now, you guys are uh, you're still on tour, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that tour uh, looks like it started back in July. Is that right? Uh, maybe even before that, we've been on the road, like basically all year, but you know, little bits of time off, but yeah, like almost nine months. That's a strong, that's a strong tour, man. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. We try to work it, uh, old school style, like the seventies, you know, just staying on the road, road dogging it. So like kiss and rush and all the people before us. How did you guys come together? How did you meet? Oh shit, man. Um, well, I've known Ryan, uh, the guitar player, for almost 10 years, and we played in a couple projects previously. And the other dudes, oh God, I've, Dean, the drummer, he's been with me for about seven years in another project. And then Aaron and Keith have been with me for about four years. So we've known each other through other bands for a long time, and uh, we all just kind of came together. Um, and I've had this idea for a while. And like the first record I put out by myself, kind of recorded it by myself. And then all of a sudden I just started looking for dudes that wanted to play. And I kind of hustled these guys to do it for me. <laughs> I, I guess it doesn't seem like you had to push too hard either. <laughs> yeah, they were pretty excited, actually. What was the uh, the thing that ignited your passion? Man, it was, uh, I think I've always wanted to be a musician. And uh, yeah, I was born in Texas. And my parents were huge partiers. My mom was 18 when she had me. I mean, she's a hippie. So we had some land in Texas, and they would always have live bands. So when I was a kid, they'd have live bands. And my mom used to take me to uh, Willie Nelson's Fourth of July party every year <laughs> as a kid. So I just would watch these bands, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. You know, so mm -hmm. I always knew I was going to do it. And and I'm doing it, and it's kind of a trip all the time. I'm like, oh, I'm doing what I thought I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally walking in the footsteps I belong in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, my parents probably were the, you know, the biggest influence. You know, they always loved music and listened to tons of albums. So it went, like I said, from you know, like Willie Nelson and Cat Stevens to tons of Queen and Meatloaf and Led Zeppelin. I mean, there was records constantly spinning in our house. You know, I know we caught you in the middle of your tour. Just kind of want to take the temperature. How's it going out there? Things are great, man. You know, tour is always a roller coaster, but, you know, I I would say it's always, you know, positive, man. Like, we're really lucky. We're really lucky that we can make it within the States and within Canada. A lot of bands struggle. Um, yeah, Calgary but, is not a big fan of Black Pussy, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, it worked not out. Not the really band. The band's not the problem. <laughs> Yeah, it's the name. Well, that show, it's funny, that show ended up getting canceled, which, you know, you know, it got canceled from a venue we'd played like five times before, and the promoter really loves us. But, you know, shit went down, whatever, no hard feelings against the promoter. It was his right. business partners. But we ended up playing a venue that was three times as big and sold, oversold it out. Well, you, your band name is kind of, uh, obviously, it's, it's it can draw its own controversy. I thought it was ironic because I have a little black cat and that's actually what I call him sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the band name is a multi entendre and it's very ambiguous. Yeah. So, and I, I'm sure it looks great on a marquee. Yeah. Yeah. It makes people like you're, you're drawn to it. And when, you know, when I came up with this band name, you know, the first thing I did was to, to see if anyone was using it. And that's what caught me off guard. I'm like, no one had, had utilized this band name. Huh. And I'm like, I'm using it. And it's easy to remember, you know, in a sea of bands and oh, yeah. you know, tourist bands, like, you know, the Guitar Center bands, it's like, it's hard to be remembered. So I was like, oh, that's a great name. People always remember the name. And uh, I like the vibe, you know, people try to say that I came up with a band name through the Rolling Stone song, but that's not true. I just thought it had like a, a 70s feel to the, to the name. And uh, so it felt 70s. I'm like, that's what I kind of, you know, that's the umbrella for the songs. And it's easy to remember. So it sounds like your shows are getting a lot of good turnout. That's awesome. You know, a lot of young bands talk to me and I'm like, you have to tour now. We're just in an era of the business where if you're not touring, you're not working. And, you know, myself and my dudes were like, this is what we're going to do. And this is what we have to do to, you know, barely scrape by. 
And, uh, and I feel really blessed that, you know, we, we've gained some followers and a lot of good friends. And, you know, we put a lot of elbow grease into this, you know, we've been doing this straight for four years, like yeah. on the road, four years straight. And, uh, you know, and it just shows, and, you know, to all the other bands out there that if you build it, they will come, you know, use the words of Kevin Costner. Right. <laughs> 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 that's really funny that you ripped him off that's hilarious <laughs> I'm glad you like that <laughs> hey man now I just need to find James Earl Jones and he, he can guide me the rest of the way there you go there you go <laughs> let's talk about your album it has the layout even like a 70s album yeah exactly we we always the, the songs get what the you know what the song requires like if the universe says hey man the song's supposed to be this long or you know, it can be from 22 minutes to three minutes. And, you know, we're a DIY band. We, we run our own label. And so we do exactly what we want. This is an art project. And, you know, that's how we, we want it. We, it's an art project, man. And, mm-hmm. and we try to keep it pure. You know, there's no bullshit in this. And, you know, people are like, you're never going to be famous with a band name like that. And I'm like, well, we, di- we didn't really set out to be famous or win Grammys. People get offended by black pussy, but you're not offended by black crows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. you, with regards to "Don't Fear the Reaper," you led into the album right with that song. I thought that was a great idea to, to you know, yeah. you guys yeah. did a great job honoring the original while also injecting black pussy into it. Well, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, I've always wanted to do that, and it was a song that, uh, like, the the BOC recording of it was a little lo-fi. It's a it's a great recording, but I'm like, okay, I can up the production a little. And then uh, I studied a lot of their uh, uh, live performances. So that's how I kind of wrote the end. I listened to multiple live performances on how they ended it. So I just kind of combined their, it's still all their ideas. I just combined them all and then recorded it that way and, and tried to stay true to the original. Yeah, I really feel like it, it had that formula, like this is how we intended it. And then this is how Black Pussy also intended it. Yeah, and and hopefully, you know, you know, if some kids haven't heard of Blue Oyster Cult before, this might be like a gateway into them finding VOC. You know, they're like, oh, Black Pussy didn't write this song, and who did? And, and then that leads, you know, to keep them rock and roll alive. It's all in the younger generation to do that now. <laughs> it, it, you're very, very correct, man. And, and we need to stay tough and keep them rock alive. You know, especially right now, the establishment would definitely like to kill it. Nothing speaks louder than walking around with a, a band's T-shirt. I still, Very true. New, I still get new ones all the time. My wife, my wife, she's like, how many fucking things do we need? I'm like, all of them. We need all, all of them. them. And some days I feel slayerish. Some days I don't. <laughs> you know, it's like, whatever. Whatever I'm into today. Yeah, exactly. Where, where can fans get your shirts and CDs and stuff? Um, well, I mean, our band camp, whatever that is, Black Pussy Band Camp. And then, of course, on tour, man, come see us in the flesh. And, uh, you know, that's the best way. See us live and see if you want to buy a shirt then. Black Pussy coming to a town near you. I like that. Get like, get like the theater guy to say it, you know? <laughs> well, at this point, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Oh, man, that would be a long, long list. I mean, really just all the people that support us and, you know, especially with all the controversy and, you know, people are like, don't change the name and they keep supporting this, which is, you know, you know, people that are supporting us and especially with the controversy they're really fighting the establishment and keeping the idea of rock and roll alive. Agree with our band name or not, you know, rock and roll has always been a little offensive, even though that wasn't my point in the band name, but the support of our fans is really, those are the, that's who I want to thank the most because that's why we're out here. Because if we didn't have that, we'd be in the rehearsal room. Well, Dustin, I want to take up all your time. I know, you know, you, kind of on breaking between shows and everything so i'm gonna let you go but uh i really want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule it's been great hanging with you it's been great meeting you and uh i hope the tour continues to uh, go well for you guys well thank you so much thanks for the support and thanks for having me thanks fred sure gang i'll be back another time if you ever have a mystery to solve sorry we almost killed you oh that's all right it happens often I still don't like that thing around your neck. It actually hides something. I don't want to know. I'm building the droid, Jay. Yeah, I know. I, I donated. I'm building the, I've am building. i been building the droid now for 17 days. 
And those assholes can't stop sending me emails and updates and shit. Yeah, you got, I think you could hit an unsubscribe button at the bottom because that's why I do a lot of updates and videos. And I make videos of the progress from the beginning to the end, from the machines coming in the house to... There's a whole nice little story you could follow along, even if you don't want to donate a buck or two to me building a BB-8 droid, a real BB-8 droid that rolls around, not a puppet like they used in the movie. The actual technology has been developed, and I can build it. Right now, I'm working on an ARM prototype that would be coming out of BB-8 to hand the kids something that they can have. Uh, and I don't ever go in the room. I don't ever see the kid. I control the BB-8 from outside, kind of keep it near enough to the door where I could see it and roll it out. BB-8 goes in with the nurse, and I'm outside looking like a passerby. So I'm building that. And I want to, and I'm going to find guys who are going to drive it. I'm not going to be the only driver. I'm going to just get teams that I can trust, you know, people in the circle. Not necessarily people I know yet. But if you want to donate to that, click below into the show notes, and we'll have some information up there in today's play along. And today's play along is the video of me building the robotic arm. He says arm, but he means penis. It's a robotic penis with two elbows. Yeah. It's going to be real popular with the ladies. The little kids probably aren't going to want much to do with this thing. Actually, I only have two joints in that. I bet you I can add a third. <laughs> I want to add a third. I could do that. I'm going to actually write the engineer who installed the LED. It. We have yeah. the technology. Anyways, I'm building Good job, this Lee droid. Majors. Tear it up. <laughs> and the video itself of me, the this is the first droid video. There's really, really funny, because I try to make stuff funny, definitely rated PG, Videos you can watch of me, like three or four videos already up there from the start of the build till today. I only have $30 donated, by the way. Wow. Yeah, so it's going great. I was going to say, because I didn't give you much of anything. Right. And then I do have a company that said that they would make and laser cut the aluminum for R2-D2's body. Uh, because after I get a case to keep this BB-8 safe, because he can't travel around in my car. And really the cost of a case, if I had to play full price for a case i would probably buy, buy a trailer and a used trailer and keep it in there because that way i could put r2d2 in there next so if you guys want in on that great my biggest fear is that the damn thing gets funded but like you got a rich uncle or crazy aunt that you know is going to leave all their money to the cats aunt margarita yeah she doesn't know yet but just it's better than cats i saw some kid i was going to see my grandma when she died like all of us had somebody die jim think uh, you're didn't. going south here dude but Don't I saw that. a kid in the hospital, and I just thought, I never saw anybody look so bored in my life. As I passed by, I looked in. He's watching Mama's Family. He's got to be nine years old watching Mama's Family from the 80s. And I was like, shit, all, this, <laughs> all, like, all, those kid, all, all of his friends are at school, and he's stuck here for whatever reason. Tonsils, cancer, I don't care. Here's a droid, kid, smile. Herpes. Yeah, he's going to give you something. A little arm's going to pop out at the end. play along with today's play along just click below in the live nude puppets.com and you'll see play along right at the top Batches. i don't have to show you any stinking batches peace and love worldwide live life before life lives here. why do you need a turkey baster Hey, Live Nude Puppet fans, go to LiveNudePuppets.com to get your Live Nude Puppets t-shirt. We got one for $9.99, we got one for $12.99, we got double-sided, you name it. But our fans come first, the lowest prices in t-shirts, and the only t-shirt that gets you laid. It looks like a penis. <laughs> I love that. Dear Santa and Jesus and Obi-Wan Kenobi, please help all the listeners to subscribe and share my daddy and Uncle Jay's podcast. They love to share awesome bands with the world. And please teach daddy to be funny and stop swearing so much, especially Uncle Jay. He smells like whiskey and Philly cheese steak sandwiches. Please subscribe and share my daddy and Uncle Jay's podcast.